All right, let's start working on some kinematics examples. Uh, so I've just got a couple problems for you, and I'll just kind of walk you through some of them, and that'll be somewhat representative of what you'll see on both your assignments and on your exam, so you can get some practice in. Um, all right, so this first one we have here, we're going to say a cheetah can accelerate from rest to 30 meters per second in 7 seconds. And it's a very simple question. We just want to know what is the acceleration during this time. So we're given what we're essentially given um, an initial speed, a final speed, and a time. And what we want to do is we want to find acceleration. So this is somewhat analogous, again, to a um, distance equals rate times time problem. Again, uh, uh, the distance that we're covering, we're not really covering a distance, we're not asking directly about distance, but the kind of analogous distance you can think of is we're going from 0 meters per second to 30 meters per second. And what we want to do is we want to cover that quote-unquote distance, right, that change in velocity in a certain amount of time. So we do have a nice simple formula that we can use for this one. We can say that uh, we have this. We have v final equals the initial plus a times t. In this case, uh, we're not don't have any sort of directions being specified, so we can just kind of pick. We can just make everything positive, right? We're just saying it starts at rest, and then initially just accelerates in the positive direction. Uh, the velocities will all be positive, and the acceleration will be positive. We don't have to worry about any of that type of stuff for this one. Um, so we have our v final, which is what 30 meters per second equals our v initial, which is zero. So we're starting from rest, right? So we're not explicitly given that, but you know, starting from rest, you can say the initial velocity is zero equals a times seven seconds. So of course, just simply divide your 30 meters per second divided by seven, and you solve for your a, and you get an acceleration of about 4.3 meters per second squared. Uh, and this does, you know, we can follow along with our units, make sure we get the correct units. We have meters per second, we're dividing by another factor of seconds, so we are going to get meters per second squared, which is what the units of acceleration are. So a nice simple problem, but we can just kind of go through all the steps and make sure we understand exactly what's going on. Okay, we'll move on, we'll do another one. Uh, we can say now we have a hockey player It's going to accelerate a puck from 8 meters per second to 40 meters per second in 3.33 times 10 to the negative 2 seconds, and they do this while they are shooting, right? Um, and what we want to know in this case is how far does the puck travel during this time? So this one's a little bit more complicated. We have a couple different steps that we're going to do. Um, so again, we are looking for a distance, um, so it's going to be good to try and write down an equation where we have distance actually show up, right? Uh, we're also given a time, though, so we do have a couple different uh, distance equations, right? The main one that we use would be this. We have delta x equals v naught t plus one half a t squared. We also have another one that involves distance that I derived for you. v squared equals v naught squared plus two a delta x. Um, and in this case, uh, you can kind of do it either way. Um, either one of these will work, but both of them are still missing some information that you would need, right? Um, I'm going to go ahead and use this one over here, this first equation that I wrote down. So this one will work. I'll kind of show you how, but just as far as the way I prefer to do it, it's just a matter of preference, though, is I just would use this equation here to make use of the fact that we do have this time. However, we are still missing some pieces, right? So we're looking for delta x. We have the initial speed, right? 8 meters per second. We have the time. Right? But what we don't have is acceleration. Right? So we still need to figure out what the acceleration is. So then when we have, once we have that, right, here's our one equation that we have so far. We don't know delta x. That's what we're looking for. We don't know a. And so if we have a, we can then simply plug everything into our calculator and figure out what this delta x has to be. So how are we going to figure out the a? Well, the other thing that we're given is, again, we have the initial speed, we have the final speed, and we have the time. So we can actually do this. this um, in a very similar way to that we just did with the first problem with that cheetah, right? We want to know what that acceleration is, so we can simply write another equation. V final equals V initial plus A times T. Again, everything in this case is just all going in the positive direction. We had positive 8 meters per second, positive 40 meters per second, so we should be okay. We don't have to worry about keeping track of our minus signs or anything like that. 
Um, so in this case, we do have an initial velocity that's not zero, so we do have to keep track of that. But the overall idea is the same. We can say a will end up being v final minus v initial divided by t, right? So when we do that, we get, okay, so we have v final is 40 minus v initial is 8 divided by t is 3.33 times 10 to the negative 2 seconds. And so the overall acceleration that you should get in this case, uh, it's going pretty quick. It's a quick acceleration, but it's happening for a very short amount of time. Acceleration is about 960 meters per second squared. So now with this, once you have this A, you can actually plug it into either one of these equations up here, right? So in this equation, once we have the A, the only thing we don't know is delta x, so solving for it is very easy. Just simply plug this, all this stuff into your calculator. you got to keep track of your parentheses and make sure you square everything that you need to and all that. Um, but essentially, you've, right, you've done the physics. You just have to plug and chug into your calculator at this point. For this one, it's very similar. We do have this A. We're given these initial and these final speeds, and what we want is the delta x. You can solve for it. You'd have to do some algebra for that one. Um, again, either way you go about it, though, you should be, still get the right answer, and what you should end up getting is delta x equals your v naught t. So I can just do it this way. v naught t, so we have 8 times 3.33 times to the minus 2 plus 1 half times a 960 meters per second times t squared. And what you should get is a delta x of about 0 0.8. Oops, let me make sure you can actually see what I'm writing. 0 0.8 meters. So we did have a very... Um, very high acceleration in this case, right? We're accelerating this puck very quickly. We're changing the speed of this puck very quickly, but we're only doing so for a very short amount of time. So despite that, um, this enormous acceleration, we didn't really go very far during this time. And then went about 0.8 meters, which would be about right for just like a typical slap shot or something like that. Um, and so, yeah, so again, high acceleration, very short amount of time. So we still end up going a reasonable distance in this time. All right, so we can move on to a couple more complicated examples, a couple more steps that we have to keep track of. Um, you can take a look at this one next. We can say, oops, let me make sure you can actually read it. Uh, we can say a sprinter in a 100 meter dash is going to accelerate for the first three seconds of the race, and then they're going to continue the rest of the race at a constant speed for seven seconds. And then we want to know, so they're going to finish this race in a total of 10 seconds, right? So we want to know what is their initial acceleration and, and then what is their final velocity as well. So this one has a couple different steps to it, but let's just start trying to break this down piece by piece and see what we can get to. So the first thing we know is we do have two different sections, right? We have two different sets of equations that we're going to have to keep track of because we initially, for these first three seconds, we are accelerating, and so we can have one set of equations that will work for that circumstance. And then when we uh, our acceleration stops, right? We no longer have acceleration. We're not stopped. We haven't stopped moving. We are just now moving at a constant speed for seven seconds. And of course, um, in real life, you know, if you've ever just gone for a run or if you've ever gone sprinting, this isn't quite how it works. You don't just accelerate at the exact same rate and then all of a sudden, uh, like a light switch, turn it off and stop accelerating, right? And just immediately um, begin moving at a constant speed. It's going to be a little bit of a smoother transition than that, um, of course. However, this is a good approximation, right? Our model is going to approximate this as we have some acceleration and then we don't have acceleration, right? And it'll still work. We'll still get pretty reasonable results for that. Um, right, so let's write down what we know about the, these first couple things. I'm going to say it looks something like this. So I know I have delta x1 equals 1 half a t1 squared. So we don't have any sort of initial speed for the first part. Uh, this is not explicitly stated, um, but you can make a, you can safely assume that this person is not cheating. They did not take off early, um, so they're in, in a 100 meter dash. So I'm assuming, right, I'm baking in, right, we would normally have this other term of plus v naught t, and I'm just t telling you right away that v naught, that initial speed for this first part of the trip is zero, right? Again, we're running a race, we're not cheating, um, so we are going to start at rest, right, when this race begins. Uh, so yeah, so this will describe our motion for the first part of our trip while we are accelerating. What what do we know about this, though? We don't know delta x1. We don't know how far we went um, while we were accelerating. We don't know um, 
this acceleration. We don't know what the a is, but we do know what the t is. Right now we have one equation, and we have two things that we don't know. So we're going to have to keep writing. We're going to have to keep up coming up with some more pieces of information that will help us. Let's go ahead and do this for the second part of our race as well. We have delta x2 equals, now we do have constant speed. I'm going to call it, in this case, I'm going to call it v final. And I'll tell you, explain that why in a second. It's usually v initial, but it's, we're going to call it v final in this case. v final times t2. And then for the second part of the race, it's this uh, it's this acceleration term that is zero, right? There's no acceleration for the second half, so we don't have to worry about that. So these will be our two equations that we start with. I'm calling this one v final. Um, it's the final speed that they end up with, right? It's their, It's the end final speed that they accelerate up to at the end of part one. It's the speed that they start part two at, but it's also the speed that they end part two at again, because accelerate for three seconds, constant speed for seven seconds. So now what do we have? So now we have, uh, we've added another equation, but we don't know delta x2. We don't know v final, and we don't know, sorry, we do know t2, right? So we still have delta x1, delta x2, v final, and a, and we do not know any of those. Um, so we still have, what is this, one, two, three, four equations, or sorry, four unknowns amongst the two equations. So we need to do some more work for this. We need to come up with some other pieces of information. What else do we know? How else can we relate these variables to each other? Um, some of these will come from your kinematics equations that we have. Um, however, in this case, we'll see, this is a good example of a case where we're, I, there's an equation you have to use that is not part of your kinematics equations, but it's something you can just kind of look at the problem and understand the physical situation and see what is going on. Uh, how can I relate delta x1 and delta x2? So this is how far I ran while I was accelerating, or while this person was accelerating, I'm not this fast. Uh, and this is how far I ran or sorry, how fast this person ran at a constant speed, right? Um, so we're going to say something we can relate delta x1 and delta x2 by. We can say delta x1 plus delta x2 equals 100 meters, right? That just has to be true. We know that we ran, uh, this person ran a 100 meter dash, and so the distance for the first part of the trip plus the distance for the second part of the trip has to have been a total of 100 meters. So this is one piece of information that we can use. Um, this will help get rid of, we can solve for one of these variables and plug it in. However, we have, we need another piece of information, right? We still need something else to relate these because this would only get rid of one of the two distances and then I would have three unknowns with two equations. So we need one more piece of information. And what we can use is this. So this V final is going to be equal to A times t1, right? These are two different sections of the trip, but it is just one physical person running this whole race. Whatever speed they accelerate up to at the end of part one, that is the speed that they are running at for the entirety of part two. So I can say this v final is equal to their acceleration times or time. Again, it should be v final equals v naught uh, plus at, but this v naught, again, we're, we're saying when they start the race is zero. So with this, now I can plug back into these two, and I will get two equations and two unknowns, and then I can start turning the crank. I can start doing my algebra. I can start plugging in and solving for these different things. So let's go ahead and let's start doing that. Um, how do I want to do this? What's the fastest way? So let's go ahead. Let's write our delta x2. Delta x2 equals a times t1 times t2. All right, so I'm just simply plugging in for v final. This v final we know is a times t1. Just slap it in for that one. Um, then the other thing I can substitute in, I'm going to get rid of delta x2 in this equation as well. And so now my final two equations that I'll be working with to solve this problem would be these. I would say something that looks like this. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call this L for the length of the race. I just don't want to write 100 meters over and over again. So I'm going to say L minus delta x1 equals a t1 t2. I'm running out of room here. Hold on a second. Um, and then I'm also going to say, so this is one of my equations that I'll use, and then I'm also going to say delta x1 plus, oops, sorry, not plus, delta x1 equals one half a t1 squared, right? So now with these two, I 
don't know delta x1, and I don't know a, but I do know t1, I do know t2, and I do know l. So I can now just simply start solving for these. So I already have an expression for delta x1, so let's just go ahead and plug that in and see what we get. So we have l minus delta x1 minus 1 half a t1 squared equals a t1 t2. So now, which is the one we don't know? We don't know a, so that's what we have to solve for. So we're going to write it like this. We have, start collecting all your a terms on one side. We have l equals a t1 t2 plus 1 half a t1 squared. Now pull the a out, divide by the other terms, and what we get is something that looks like this. We have a equals l divided by t1 t2 plus 1 half t1 squared. So l is 100, t1 is 3 seconds, t2 is 7 seconds, t1 again 3 seconds. We know what all those numbers are. Carefully plug them into your calculator, keep track of your parentheses, and you get an acceleration of about 3.92 meters per second squared. Make sure I get my units right. Um, and it is, this is a distance, and this is time squared, and this is time squared, right? So these can add together just fine. So we have a distance, we have meters divided by a second squared, so we do get um, a value for our acceleration. Once we have this, the thing that we want to know, right, if we go back up to our initial problem, make sure you keep track of what we're actually being asked for. We wanted the acceleration, we wanted the final velocity. The final velocity is now very simple, right? We just go back up, we look at our definition of this. We have V final equals A times t1, plug this in, we have a, which is our 3.92, we have our t1, which is 3 seconds, and we get a final velocity of about 11.76 meters per second. If you're curious, you can also go back, you can solve for delta x1 and delta x2. Delta x1 should be about 17.64 meters. Delta x2 should be about 82.36 meters, depending on how you round, but it should be somewhere in that ballpark. Um, so yeah, so that's how you do that one. There's a lot of information that we have to keep track of here, right? Um, the only kinematics that we're able to use are these three here, and then this one we just kind of have to look at the problem. We have to use all the information that we're given. We just have to know, okay, if we're running a 100 meter dash, then I can be sure that all the individual parts, right, delta x1 and delta x2, all the individual parts of that 100 meter dash have to add up to 100 meters, right? That's kind of, the, this using this, I think, is the real tricky thing of this problem. And it, it's, it sounds super obvious when you state it, um, but understanding that you can write an equation for that and then exploit that in these equations is the tricky part and something to keep in mind. All right, we've got one more. Um, let's see. This one, this one will do a one-dimensional falling problem. So we're going to say we have a shot putter here, right? Uh, in this case, we have a strong but inept shot putter. It's going to throw his shot straight up, right? Uh, he's going to do this at initial velocity of 11 meters per second. We can say how long does he have to get out of the way if the shot was released 2.2 meters above the ground and if the sky is... 1.8 meters tall. So we're going to release it slightly above where we're standing, right? We are extending our arm. Um, we're tossing it up at an initial speed of 11 meters per second. Um, this is going to be an object in free fall once we toss it. So we know what the acceleration is going to be right away. And it's going to be 9.8 meters per second squared. And it's going to be in the down direction, whether you want to call down um, positive or negative is up to you. In this case, I'm just going to call it negative. Um, but yeah, so we have all this information we want to know is uh, how long does he have to get out of the way if the shot was released 2.2 meters above the ground and he is 1.8 meters tall? So how much time is going to pass for this shot put to go up, hit its highest point, and then come back down um, and be at head level for him? So he's got to get got a couple seconds to get out of the way. We need to figure out exactly how long he has to do that. 
Uh, so let's see, let's start writing down what we know about this case. I'll, uh, we'll call it, we're traveling in the vertical direction. I'll just go ahead and use delta y in this case for our distance. So we'll just write our very standard displacement equation for a falling object in one dimension. So we have delta y equals v naught t minus one half g t squared. And so again, what we know is this g is going to be 9.8 meters per second. So I'm going to, the g is a positive number, but then I'm putting this minus sign out here to denote that it is the acceleration is downward. So the other thing that you want to keep track of is this. Once you have decided that down is negative, make sure that you are consistent with that for the rest of your terms. So this initial velocity then has to be positive, right? It was thrown straight up. So when I plug this in, this is going to be a positive 11 meters per second. Um, however, this delta y, let's address this. What is going on with this delta y? What is the overall displacement of our shot put as it goes? It starts 2.2 meters above the ground, and we want to see how long is it going to take by the time it goes up and then comes back down and is 1.8 meters above the ground. So the delta y itself, um, we don't know what the overall trip of the shot put is. We don't know the distance traveled, but we actually do know the displacement, right? Again, displacement, this is a displacement equation. This is not a distance traveled equation. The displacement is going to be very simply final minus initial, right? So I have 1.8 meters is my final position minus 2.2 meters is my initial position. And this is, of course, going to equal delta y, which will be negative 0.4 meters. So that's another important thing to understand, right? Uh, I, am, I am ending, make sure I say this correctly, I am ending lower by 0.4 meters than where I started, right? My final position is 1.8, my initial is 2.2. So I'm ending 0.4 meters lower, so this should also be negative. So that's, again, going to be important when you go to plug your numbers in. Once you pick down as negative, that's fine. Just make sure you're consistent with it for everything. If you pick up as negative, that's also fine. What you'll notice is all you're really doing is multiplying your whole equation by negative 1, right? This term would be positive. This term would then be negative and this term would be positive, and that's okay. It, it will still, again, the math will work out to be the same. You'll get the same time, you get the answers right, but just make sure once you pick one, you stick with it. Um, all right, so let's go ahead, let's start plugging these numbers in. So what do I have? I have, um, I'll plug all these numbers in, it's a little, little bit easier to see. So we have negative 0.4 meters equals 11 meters per second times time minus one half times 9.8 meters per second squared times time squared. So we do have one equation, and luckily for us, we also have one unknown. However, we have this issue with a t, and we have a t squared. So how are we going to fix that? Well, we got to go back to our algebra skills again, and we got to pull out the quadratic formula, which I'm sure you all have memorized, right? So in this case, you know, you have your x equals opposite of b plus or minus b squared, sorry, plus or minus square root of b squared, minus 4c all over 2a. Um, but in this case, we're not solving for x, we're solving for t. So t is taking the place of our x. So we have t is equal to the opposite of b. What is b in this case? Let's rearrange this actually before I start writing this so we can see what's going on. We're going to pull this, um, which way do I want to write it? It doesn't matter. Which way I do it in my notes? Make sure I get that right. Um, we are going to write it like this. We are going to say, we're going to make this term positive. We're going to say 1 half g t squared minus v naught t plus delta y equals 0. I'm going to run out of room here. Let me rewrite this again. All right, so we've got 1 half g t squared minus v naught t plus delta y equals 0. So again, it's important to remember, this will be a, a negative number, right? This, this is a minus sign in front of a positive number. This is a, and I'm writing it as plus delta y, but this plus delta y is negative 0 0.4. So let's go ahead and write this out explicitly. So we have t equals the opposite of b, which in this case will be v naught, which will be 11 meters per second plus or minus, which one do we pick? We'll address that here in a second. Um, let's go ahead and do it both ways and see what we get. Plus or minus the square root of b squared, 11 meters per second squared, 
minus 4ac. So we have minus 4 times a. In this case, a is 1 half g, which is 4.9 meters per second squared times c, which in this case is negative 0.4. So the way I'm going to write this is I'm going to write this as positive 0.4 meters. I'm going to pull that negative sign out here. Right, so again, this is a negative number. This is a negative change in position. You can divide this whole thing by 2a. 2 times 1 half times g is just g. So times, sorry, divide by 9.8 meters per second squared. So of course, as you remember, we do get two answers from this. We get a plus and we get a minus. Um, and one of them will be correct for our situation. Um, and we're going to just kind of have to look at the physical situation and see what's going on. This example doesn't show it as well. At some point, I will, um, I believe, in the next section when we do projectile motion. Excuse me. There's um, some examples where both of these really do, like, um, both of these do satisfy the mathematical equations. The mathematical equations are based on our models that we've de developed. So both of these are meaningful in some way. One of them will be correct for our situation. Um, there are some examples that you will see in the next section, not this one. This one doesn't show it too well. Um, there are some examples that you'll see in the next section um, that will deal with really kind of seeing what the physical meaning of both of these. It's a little bit more difficult to see this one, but let's go ahead. Let's do this twice. Let's see what we get for our different values of t. We have t could possibly be, if you plug all this into your calculator, right, 2.28 seconds or 13.15 seconds. Okay, so these are our two different values. So now at this point, which one do you pick? Um, again, in this case, you really just do have to look at the physical situation and see which one makes sense. Sometimes you'll get a negative number. Obviously, you probably don't want negative time. Again, it's not physically meaningless. I'll show you an example where you do get negative time and it works out okay. Um, but in this case, for this problem, we do want this one. If we're throwing this shot put up um, at 11 meters per second as our initial velocity, um, we know our acceleration. You can kind of just count it off like this. We know our acceleration is going to be g, which is going to be negative, sorry, negative g, so negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So Basically, when I throw this up, this is how you can kind of count it off to, to estimate what this value should be, what this t should be. When I throw this shot put up one second later, sorry, every second it loses about 10 meters per second worth of speed, right? So 9.8. So you can approximate as 10 just to kind of get your um, approximate value in your head. If you don't want to plug everything in your calculator, I can say I'm throwing it up at 11 meters per second. One second later, it will have lost almost all of its speed, right? Very shortly after that, it will stop and um, at the top. It will hit zero velocity for a very brief instant. It will keep accelerating, though. And then w another second after that, it will be coming back down at about, now it's going at negative 10 meters per second. And so then it's going to have to go a little bit further. It doesn't end at the same height. It goes um, an extra 0.4 meters on its way down. So you'd expect one second up, it almost loses all of its speed. One second down, it almost gains back all of that speed. And so then there's a little bit of extra distance that it has. It was going a little bit faster. It's not going to be 13 seconds that it's going to spend in the air. That's going to be too much time. It will be uh, this 2.2 at a little bit over two seconds. So this is the answer that you want in this case. Um, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Um, and so yeah, so that is how you would do this problem. Again, we have all this information, but we just have to, we actually do just have, we can write it down as one equation um, with one unknown. We just have to go back and we have to use our quadratic formula in this case.